In chapter two, we discussed graphing numbers and inequalities in one variable. So when we we're drawing that picture, the graph was represented on a number line. So to enable us to graph with two variables, we need to introduce another axis now. So now we are looking at what's called a plane. So the number line is associated with one variable, two, now we're looking at the coordinate plane or the Cartesian plane, however you want to think about it. So just examining the plane again, we want to talk about the different pieces that are involved, if it's been a while since you've seen one of these. Each of the four parts of a graph, they have names and we label them one through four going counterclockwise. So this is the first quadrant, upper right, upper left is the second quad, third quadrant down here, and fourth. So if you move on to higher math, especially if you take like pre-algebra or trig, you'll need to know those names because you can talk about, okay, where is my point ending up in what quadrant based on what maybe my, my angle is. Okay. So, what else? The center point where the two axes are intersecting it has a special name. It's called the origin, and that is through the point zero, zero. So we use those synonymously. The horizontal axis is the x-axis. Vertical is the y. And we can talk about what a different point in each quadrant is going to look like. So if I have a point in the first quadrant, my x and y coordinates are going to be looking like what? So positive x and positive y. So any point in the first quadrant is going to have positive positive kind of a good tell of where we should graph it. Any point over here is going to have what kind of x and y coordinates. So x is now negative, but y is still positive. Point in the third quadrant. Now we're talking negative and negative. Minus x, minus y. And lastly, anywhere down here, positive x, negative y. So if you're given points not on a graph and you can see the signs of the x and the y coordinates, you can tell where is it going to be in the coordinate plane. So as we're looking at an ordered pair in here, just a reminder, any point x and y is called an ordered pair. The x comes first, the y comes second, the x allows us to move which direction? Left and right. And that's what happens first. Then from that point, we move according to y up and down. So on the next page, we want to be able to see some coordinate points graphed on the plane and actually determine what are the coordinates. What's the x value and the y value associated to these individual points? So we're going to start alphabetical D, E, F. G? Yeah, through G. And we are going to discuss what are the coordinate points of all of those involved. So A, where is he located? Second quadrant. So I've got negative X. How many do I go back? One, two, three. So I go back three and up how many? One, two, three, four, five. So negative, positive direction. What about for B? Again, starting from the origin, we move the x-coordinate first. So 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 5. And up 1, so positive 1. And again, it doesn't matter connotation. It should be positive, positive if it's in the first quadrant. C is in the third quadrant, so I've got negative, negative. How many x-coordinates did I move over? 1, 2, 3, back 4 and down one, two, three. So minus four, minus three, that gives us the coordinates for C. D is in the fourth quadrant, so I've gone over positive two, and I made a little 
point, and down one, two, three, four. So again, positive negative fits. E, what are we looking at? So over one, up one, two, three, four, five. So x first, y second. F, how many am I moving along the x-axis? Minus two, but then I'm not moving up and down at all. So I've moved zero units to move up and down along the y-axis, or the y-plane, rather. And what about G? So how many units have I moved left and right from the origin? Zero. But I've moved up one, two, three units along the x-axis. Excuse me, along the y. We didn't move along the x, now we're moving along the y. Okay. So graphs can be used to represent solutions of an equation. Because we have infinitely many solutions, if I'm talking about a line, continues on for forever. And drawing a picture is a good representation of all of those solutions. So unless stated otherwise, to determine whether a pair, a coordinate pair, is a solution, we use the first number in each pair to replace the variable that occurs first alphabetically. So if they don't tell you it's x and y, maybe it's p and q. It's based on alphabet. Alphabetically. So what comes first in the alphabet is the first coordinate pair. So, determine whether each of the following pairs is a solution of 4q minus 3p equals 22. And we want to check is 2, 7 a solution and minus 2, 6. So, what comes first in the alphabet? P. So, P, Q is our ordering for the pair. So, let's plug in and check 2, 7 first. So, P. I plug in 2 and for Q I'm plugging in 7. So, let's check and make sure. Is this actually True, is that a solution to that equation? So I'm looking at 28 minus 6, is that equal to 22? Yes. So we know that 2, 7 is a solution. And let's check the next one. So checking minus 2, 6 into our equation. P is minus 2 in this case. Q is 6. So I'm looking at 24 plus 6, since we have minus times a minus, does that equal 22? Too big. 30 does not equal 22, so this one is not a solution. So if we were going to graph this equation on a, on a line, um, on a coordinate plane, it would look like a line. This point is going to touch the line, but that one isn't. It's going to be floating off somewhere else. So go ahead and take that try. Determine whether 2 minus 4 is a solution of that equation. What did you get in that case? Alphabetically, A comes before B, so 2 is A. Minus 4 is B. When you plug that in, what do we get? 7 times 2 is 14. We're adding minus 20, is that equal to minus 6? It is, it is. So that tells me 2 minus 4 is a solution of that equation. If I were to graph it, that would fall, this point would fall on that line. Okay, so next, we want to show that those pairs are solutions of this linear equation. Then we want to graph those three points and use the graph to determine another pair that is a solution. So, first we want to verify that they actually are solutions. So this is the equation we're looking at. I'm going to check 3, 7 first. So x and y coordinates, I like it when it's just x and y, so much faster. We can plug in and check. So 7 is my y coordinate, 3 is x. Is that one true? 7 equals 7, so yes. This is a point, a solution to that line. Next, we want to check 0, 1. So 1 is my y coordinate, 0 is my x. So we got 1 is equal to 1. Yep. 
that's also a solution. And last, minus 3 minus 5. So minus 5, is that equal to 2 times minus 3 plus 1? It sure is. So we know that these three different points are a solution to this line. So when I graph these three points on a coordinate plane, and on the next page you do have a nice grid drawn out for you, we can get a picture of what that line is going to look like. So let's plot those few points. I don't think my coordinate is big enough, but we'll make it work. So first, 3, 7. So from the origin, I move positive 1, 2, 3. Up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'll just pretend that I have it drawn. It's up here. So that's one point. Another point, 0. So I move none left and right, and I move up 1. 0, 1. And always label what points you're drawing, especially if your grids are too small. And last, minus 3. 1, 2, 3, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That one barely fits. Okay, so we have a good idea of what this line is going to look like. So connect the dots, grab out a straight edge or your driver's license, whatever you need to make it work, and whoop, drawn on the ruler. We'll see what it looks like. So mine isn't very precise because it's hard to do up here, but hopefully yours looks a little better. So we want to have the little arrows on the ends because it is continuing forever in both directions. There are infinitely many solutions, but this just gives us an idea of what those solutions look like. So any point on this line represents a solution to that equation. Any point. Mm, down here. Any point. So since any point on this line is a solution, what is another solution to this equation that we can just visually see? So hopefully your grids are better drawn than mine. But this one is pretty accurate on my picture. So what is it representing? Minus 1, minus 1. If I move back one, down one, that is a solution to this line. And if you aren't convinced, you can always plug it in and check. So is minus 1 really equal to 2 times minus 1 plus 1? Minus 1 equals minus 1. So you can verify. If you haven't drawn it precisely, we can always double check, plug it into the equation.